Okay, so the idea is to talk about hereditary hemorrhagic derangic tasia, also named Osler Weber Renan syndrome. It's from Mac Many of Professional Edition. So, this is a genetic disease. It, it passes throughout a autosomal dominant a trait, so it can be passed throughout family quite uh, effectively, let's say. Uh, we have in this disease two things. We have telangiectasias in many organs, and we have atriovenous malformation, AVMs, also in many organs. Each one of them can cause problems and we will not see these problems. Merck starts with genetic abnormality that can be. It can be in the ENG gene, which is a transform TGF a gene, Activin and a SMAD H4, which is TGF beta signaling pathway. Now, it doesn't explain the mechanism by which these genes or mutation in the genes cause the problems in this disease. And yet we have two main problems, telangiectasias and AVMs. Telangiectasias, which can you can see here, lip telangiectasia, here telangiectasia, which are small blood vessels, they can, the problem, that they can bleed. They can be in the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, there they can bleed, they can bleed from the nose, which can be presented as epistaxis. The epistaxis can be profound. And from these bleedings, they can have iron deficiency anemia. Therefore, they can be treated with iron. The other problem of hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia are the AVMs, which can be in many, many organs. You can have pulmonary AVMs. The pro pro there are problems with pulmonary AVMs. One, it causes right to left chant. So, uh, blood clots, blood embolize can move from the right side of the circulation to the left side and go to places which we do not want them to be in, which is the uh, brain. So, cerebral infarction, cerebral... Uh, even cerebral infections. The, the, the reason for this is that the pulmonary have filtering mechanisms like pulmonary macrophages, a heparin and fibrinolysis characteristics. So when there are AVMs, atriovenous malformation, which is a connection between the vein and the arteries, which are abnormal, the filtering mechanism is bypassed in the pulmonary, uh, uh, in the pulmonary structure. And then the bacteria, the blood clots, the emboli can move from the right circulation to the left circulation and in the left circulation, which is, which is the systemic circulation, can go straight to the heart. Yes, from the uh, orta to the carotis, from the carotis to the brain. So AVMs in the lungs can be problematic. But even, even that, see what it tells you here. AVMs uh, in the pulmonary structure can present with brain abscess because the bacteria can bypass the filtering mechanism of the lung and go straight to the heart uh, to the brain. Also, AVMs in the uh, brain or the spinal cord can rupture and cause subarachnoid hemorrhage, can push on complexes of the brain and cause seizures or paraplegias. Hepatic AVMs can cause high output a uh, heart failure because they need more blood or liver failure. Okay, so we have telangiectasias and we have AVMs, each with it with its own problems. So the diagnosis is clinical evaluation, endoscopy, and geography, which can uh, diagnose and see the AVMs and genetic testing to the genes I just show you in the, in the start of the conversation. Uh, the criteria, the Kurako criteria for hemorrhagic, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias are three out of the four you see here. Recurrent epistasis, multiple telangiectasia, documented arteriovenous malformation in visceral organs, you can see them here, and first degree family membrane with the disease. Remember, it is a, an autosomal dominant disease. So three of the criteria, uh, make it possible, make it possible.
Okay. So screening, uh, if you, uh, if there is a family history, if you suspect this, so we can screen for the AVMs with imaging for iron deficiency anemia, chronic blood loss, and the treatment. For AVMs on the ectasia, we can do laser, we can do uh, for brain stereotactic surgery, embolizations, and et cetera, et cetera. For the iron deficiency, we can do blood transfusion and oral or intravenous iron therapy. For bleeding, like for epistaxis or a current profuse epistaxis, we can uh, use tranexamic acid, uh, GI bleedings, and angiogenesics inhibitors. Okay, those are the treatment options. And of course, for each one, we consider which is the right treatment. The AVM is more than one centimeter. Where is the AVM? Is it near structure that are problematic in the brain? Uh, not very easy. Okay, but those are the main ideas for a treatment for hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias. And uh, antifibrinolytic drugs can reduce the bleeding uh, occurrence. You can see them right over here, which can reduce the nasal and gastrointestinal bleeding. Paradoxical emboli need IV fluids. When you give with IV fluids, it should be given throughout the filter. Uh, and this is it. Okay, this is some words about hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia for Mac Manual Professional Edition. If you have any uh, corrections, please uh, tell me. And uh, that's it.